Hello, my name is Reverend Dr. May Elise Cannon. Today is Sunday, March 24th, and this is day 170 since the October 7th attacks by Hamas on the southern part of Israel. This Holy Week for me, um, and I'm sure for many others, feels different than Holy Week's past. Um, I feel in many ways uh, more connected to my own um, church community, uh, my family, um, people who are close to me, the Christian community that I do life with. Um, and I feel incredibly grateful uh, for those um, who are standing alongside uh, in solidarity with those who I work with at Churches for Middle East Peace, our partners uh, and members um, in person or online. I was so inspired yesterday by those who participated in Gaza ceasefire pilgrimages here in Washington, D.C., and around the United States and around the world, um, literally around the world. And I know that there are people right now uh, pilgrimaging and walking. Uh, I call it embodiment prayer, where um, we're using our minds and our hearts and our bodies. And that will continue today and throughout the Holy Week. I'd invite you, um, I'll be doing another pilgrimage um, on Friday in Philadelphia um, at Lockheed Martin. You can find out more about that through Red Letter Christians. Um, and today is a, a sacred day. Today is Palm Sunday, marking Jesus's triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And I've often felt, um, especially when I lived in Jerusalem, that it was a place that was sacred in so many ways. Less so the buildings per se, but something about the ancientness of the place, that those verses that talk about if the stones did not cry out, uh, or if the people did not cry out to worship him, the stones would cry out. Um, I sometimes felt like I could feel or hear the city groaning, um, the city of Salem, the city of peace, um, that it is so longing for peace. I wonder if that's something uh, that the city has ever known. And my prayer for us as we enter into this Holy Week is that God might renew our minds and our spirits, that we would let the story of Jesus's entry into Jerusalem inspire us um, to welcome him uh, into our hearts anew, that as palms are waved around the world in churches, um, on the Mount of Olives that happened uh, several hours ago, around the world, that it might symbolize our commitment to follow Christ all the more closely, to live lives of sacrifice and service, lives of compassion as Christ exemplified and taught us to do. That's my prayer. Uh, a verse for us today from John chapter 12, verse 13. So they took branches of palm trees and they went out to meet him crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And I wanted to share with you a brief story. I mean, you might be familiar with the story, um, it's true, of uh, a young woman named Rachel Corey. I've had the opportunity uh, to spend a little bit of time with some of her family, her parents, um, her aunt. Um, you, you may know them. Um, they are uh, very involved in this critical work. She was um, killed around this time of year on March 16th, um, 2003. She was only 23 years old. Rachel was a student at Evergreen State College in Washington State. And when you go there, you can actually see a statue erected in her honor. She was a committed peace activist. She was engaged in um, the Palestinian cause. And in 2003, she'd gone to Gaza as a part of her college's senior year independent study uh, proposal um, to connect Olympia. Interestingly, I never knew this about her story um, until I was preparing uh, for this morning, but to connect the city of Olympia with Rafa as sister cities. And as you know, we've been talking about Rafa a lot these past several days. Um, we've been talking about the potential invasion of Rafa, the southernmost city in Gaza that's currently holding, you know, one point so many millions of Palestinian, one plus million Palestinians who've been displaced from other parts of Gaza. So in 2003 in Rafa, um, Rachel was there um, and the Israeli military uh, were demolishing Palestinian homes. This was the height of the second intifada. Um, and she was there uh, with some others protesting the demolitions um, of Palestinian houses. And she knelt in front of the home of a Palestinian friend and sought to prevent the demolition of the home. And she was crushed to death 
and killed by an Israeli armed bulldozer. Countless of Palestinians have lost their lives um, in that way or in similar ways, um, killed in the same way as Rachel. Um, and we remember them and we remember her. She was courageous. And Rachel's death is an example um, of international solidarity and concern. And my hope and prayer is that we would seek to follow her example um, in life. And if God calls us to it, those verses that talk about the greatest gift one might give, um, might we be obedient even unto death. We seek to do so today. My hope and prayer is that God would give us such moral courage that as we enter into the Holy Week, I pray that God would grant us the grace to be so courageous. Today, I wanted to let you know, uh, we launched um, we launched this week, uh, Holy Week with Gaza. Um, you'll see all over uh, our social media at Churches for Middle East Peace. Um, we launched this in partnership with Sabil, um, the Liberation Theology Center in Jerusalem, uh, Christ at the Checkpoint, Bethlehem Bible College, Freedom Road, Gaza Ceasefire Pilgrimages, um, the Network of Evangelicals for the Middle East, and Tell Us. Uh, all of us came together um, this Holy Week and launched Holy Week with Gaza. And throughout the week on social media, we'll be sharing devotions and reflections um, from each of our groups um, that will be released each day. Um, and so we invite you to join us in those reflections. And then the week will culminate with a Holy Saturday service, um, Saturday at three o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Um, and you can find all that information online and on social media. But, you know, this Holy Saturday, my hope and prayer is that we would allow Christ to move us to enter in whatever it is that he calls us to do, and that we would be so inspired by the stories of those like Rachel. May her memory be a blessing. That's my hope and my prayer. So let me pray for us uh, as we close our time together. Lord Jesus, bless our efforts to embody a faith that heals rather than harms, that unites rather than divides. Help us to be bearers of peace and advocates for justice, that we might be instruments of your unconditional love in a world that is desperate and yearning for reconciliation. In solidarity with all who are suffering, with all who have experienced loss, with all who are oppressed, may we stand in solidarity with those who are in Gaza, continuing to call daily for a comprehensive ceasefire, standing alongside of our Palestinian brothers and sisters, all who suffer from the yoke of oppression. May we commit ourselves to the work of liberation, not just in words, but also in deeds. May we stand alongside of all who advocate for human rights and equality and justice, Palestinians and Israelis and all in the world. May our actions reflect the teaching of the prophets who spoke truth to power and championed the cause of the oppressed. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.